So the first crore, let me see, it it took us about seven years. So when we moved to Bangalore in 2011, so when we got married and we came here as a team, we were at ground zero. Yeah. We had to start from scratch. We never looked at it uh, in terms of you know this is going to be our first crore, right? Our focus more was to have a mechanism life, built, yeah. Yeah. right? Mechanism mm -hmm. built process, around like process, yes, to set a to set a cycle of generating, accumulating, and investing wealth. I then got into this mirage of uh, excels, fancy pivots. So I used to track every single uh, rupee that we that was spent. So when I started going through all those details, I realized that that's not really changing any of my spending patterns. Then I realized I don't have to track everything, but then really give it a direction. Hmm. You know, uh, stop, the, plug the loopholes. That's what my job is now. Now that I have, a, I have set up a cycle. Generally, the first crore mark is basically you are on the right path. Because the biggest problem in investing psychologically is it, there is no instant gratification, right? Yeah. Yeah. True. Money Very true. Have to wait yeah. for Very years, true. Yes. Right? Yeah. So yes. when you hit one crore, you somewhere, somewhere you get that, you know, the loop yeah. is closed. You Validation. Get some yeah. Food. Yeah. 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 So and that, and it is also an indication that you build habits, Correct. you build discipline, etc. Right? True. That's so true. What was that first house you bought? When we got our first house, which was 10, 11 years back, uh, 11 years back, uh, I mean, it was a, a financially a very, not a wise thing probably now that I reflect because uh, there was not a lot of thought process that went into it. So our first focus at that time was to come out of that stretch. How much was it? We bought it for about 53 lakhs. And what was the down payment? Uh, 23 lakhs. Yeah. Got it. This is our second house and it was more driven by a value proposition proposition than anything else. Um, and that we got the confidence because of the practices that we have been doing. So this yeah. place is about 40 kilometers from Bangalore? Depends on what part of Bangalore. It is about 30 kilometers from where we used to stay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Where you used to stay? Kormas. Sarjapur. 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 Okay. Yeah. So how did that decision and what yeah, were the financial implications? Yeah. My job involved a lot of US overlap in terms of time zone. Okay. Hmm. So I used to go late and come back late from the office. During one such day, um, I started back from the office at about 12.30 in the night. Like I get onto the outer ring road and I get bumper to bumper traffic. At 12.30 12 in the night. Yes. And that Not really, surprised. really pissed <laughs> yeah, me off. At that piece, and that, that really led to a lot of questions in my head. You know, what is the quality of life that I'm leading here? Is this why I am... Uh, doing this so that is more of an emotional decision saying we want to get away from this yes, yes. Let's figure out because the our definition of quality of life was not was what we were getting at that time in the city so um, our house now costs uh, probably twice the the amount of uh, the apartment but it's more than almost four times as big four times four times yeah. Yeah. in terms of the built up about itself 3500 square yes yeah. the built up yeah, is about 3500 the plot is 2700 square feet and in a span of two and a half years um, we clearly see this appreciating by about 70% already so um, yeah the kind of confidence that it gave do you still own the previous house we do yeah. yes and that's put on rent yeah. we have yes so you both are CAs yes, yes. so how are your professional career? and first like you how did you make this transition right i never intended to quit my job uh, i was working in a corporate very happy rather you know i was more happy with my monthly credits than the actual work that i was doing when i look back now after i became a mother after i delivered my twins um, after i delivered our twins co-parenting sorry <laughs> okay um, so my son was one kilo at birth so he needed that little more attention and with two babies anyways it's a lot of you know attention that they need so I decided to do the right thing take a pause in my corporate career and I started enjoying the new you know journey and so these you know the whole councils took a shape and that's when I got into this consulting currently I run my venture snugbub it's a mother's support community for postpartum pregnancy support. When you left your job, whatever was your salary? I was getting about 80k per month yeah. in hand. And like for how long you were getting less than that? Because I understand passion and everything. Yeah. But like it still hurts, right? The money is money at the end, right? I still don't get that much per month, but I'm happy. Got it. I'm asking this for a lot of people who feel to whom, like especially our audience, some of them who would feel trapped. Yeah. And they would have fear to jump into something. So it's given that they will not Correct. make that much money. Exactly. Yeah. But they don't know whether they will be happy or not. Yeah. So how did that transition happen and how did that reconciliation happen? I feel for us as a couple, we never thought as money as the goal. 
वी ऑलवेज एन्जॉय दोज मोमेंट्स एंड वी न्यू दैट मनी इज द मीन्स एज लॉन्ग एज वी आर गेटिंग दैट मीन्स इनफ टू कवर वॉट आर नीड्स आर वी आर हैप्पी एंड ऑल्सो यू नो आई आई बिलीव इन दिस यू नो कहावत लाइक सर सलामत तो पगड़ी पचास सो आई न्यू कि आई हैव इट इन मी इफ नीड बी आई नो आई कैन गो बैक टू कॉर्पोरेट आई कैन do whatever is required so that must have helped a lot because yeah, yes. for sure. it didn't feel like a reversible decision exactly. like exactly. let's do it if we don't yes. enjoy if it doesn't work out we, we can always be... there's always a way back how did lifestyle change uh, after coming here there, there is a bunch of things that that yeah. changed the decision to move here triggered all those changes right hmm. one after the other uh, the biggest one of course was unschooling when we decided to unschool and you know we were in that uh, time zone where we were shifting houses Uh, we mm. wanted the house to be a yes space for the kids and less of a no space because the amount of no's a child generally hears Gets, yeah. can restrict the creativity and overall development for the child so we purposely kept the house um, not too cluttered or not too filled with furniture because we wanted it to you know Uh, be flexible to mold it based on their need could you explain what yeah. is unschooling and like how did you go into it so homeschooling is where you know you replicate a curriculum at home open learning or unschooling is where it's completely child led but do you teach them something formally saying ki you need to learn math um or, or in in a way in a very loose way i would say yes uh, but we'd never have a textbook in front of us and we sit with them but we try to imbibe elements of math in whatever in we our day do. to day in, life and there are millions of opportunities on a everyday basis so you know as i, I was mentioning we travel a lot so uh, before travel they have to you know we sit together and prepare a budget then we actually map to the actual expenses so all this is real time math now why this so you know we both we have been good achievers academically yeah and uh but how much of it are we really applying in our day to day life was a big question mark what kind of schools our kids go to or how much they uh, how much marks they secure are not going to be the success criteria for us if i reflect back on how i chose to be a ca there's no logic to it <laughs> and don't get me wrong it yeah, worked yeah. out very well for me you know i'm a all india second rank when it comes to ca exams so i love the journey i love my job but was it you know if i had exposure to many other things that happens in the world would i have decided something different probably right so at least to our kids we want to give that exposure and the freedom and that space to be able to think look and then decide what they really want to do ultimately how did your parents and relatives uh, yeah so um, i mean did... i'll tell you um, we have to be i mean i'm definitely grateful um, for our parents to be so supportive of us and to our uh, journey i know there are prying eyes you know they are they are on us they are watching what we do they are watching how the kids are reacting to it and i think d- by doing that they are getting reassured that uh, although what we are doing is very different All it's well. working out in some ways or in many ways it is working out right yeah. everybody It's, wants to do what is right for their child yeah. but yeah. what is right can change it does This change just, from does family change. to family it, it evolves, yeah. so what is suiting us may not suit you know the other family so it is important to reflect and see what is the right thing for you and how is that turning out financially you are trying to say versus conventional school yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. well uh, considering the quantum of fees school charge uh, the schools charge today i think it's safe to say that um, we end up spending lower than a conventional school however there are drastic differences in the way we spend uh, because in a conventional school um it's fairly linear i would say you know how much you're going to sp- spend over the next one year or two years but here it's uh, it's a bit more ad hoc it's unpredictable it's very variable. there is no yeah it's variable i don't know what all i'm going to spend on the next month because it really depends on what as a skill what we want to pick up what we want to drop what we want to continue as a family for the kids for us and so on so i i might have spent say a lakh on the kids just on this whole unschooling journey this month next month it might shrink down to 20k or it might balloon up to 2 lakhs you know so that's the unpredictability that we have we have we to be prepared us, for yeah. from that perspective you know we've prepared kind of uh, a fund uh, i don't know what do we call it probably a sinking fund kind of sort of a thing where we tap into where we need where we need to make these big uh, ec- Commitment, uh, commitments yeah. in terms of resources in terms of uh, classes and so on right so that we don't have to worry about it when we want to go for it many people 
they actually work hard and accumulate money because they ha- want to make sure that like their child don't have to fight for money or like create wealth for their child how do you look at it we have what we have we are not going to take any steps just because um just so that our kids get a certain amount of wealth uh, passed on to them that's not going to happen because it is up to them to make uh, their life how they want it to be we are yeah. always there to support yeah. them but if they are counting if they cannot be counting on us leaving some corpus to them uh, to survive or to you know uh. so how was the journey from 1 crore to next and to next and what were your learnings how was it different uh, right for me how different was it it was drastically different and it was uh, 100 times easier than the first one and quicker than the first one right initially i used to identify stocks you know i had that notion that i am uh, an expert at at the markets and identifying the stocks and identifying the right opportunity to get into stocks it worked in some cases backfired drastically in some cases so um, i changed my strategy to more long term my investment portfolio moved drastically earlier from being a completely 100% equity investment uh, equity specific investment portfolio to being more diversified you know all the bear bearish trends in the stock markets um, made me realize sometimes the easy way sometimes the hard way uh, that the value of fixed income and and, and safe uh, investments as well so are in my investment portfolio evolved drastically from 100% equity to now 50% equity about 30% mutual funds and debt funds and 20% into fixed deposits so it has been an evolution and the good part was since we were observing what was happening we were able to kind of imbibe all the learnings that we had and i think that really helped in terms of timing um and in terms of the efforts that we were that consciously were needed to to be put in for the subsequent crops after hitting the 1 cr mark um what really changed in our life was when we moved in here when i look back it also accelerated the future crs quite a bit uh, when we moved in here from oh, the city oh. setup yeah. <laughs> i don't know what it you know why it was like that but coming here the kind of calmness you know we all yeah. got into or a different rhythm of life yes. we got into our needs automatic automatically right. came down we completely shifted to a plant based diet uh first i started it and then they just I joined, joined. Yeah. and i think one of the best part about this journey is that our kids have seen it up close and personal and to a large extent they participated in it in with us it has helped us cut down a lot of food expense a lot of medical expenses yeah, so to say big time so it's been quite a, a years now that um, we actively took any medi- medication as such uh, not just us but the kids as well uh, so our hospital visits are but it's practically non existent what is your advice to people who, hmm. who don't have one crore corpus hmm. uh, and how do you prepare or how do you grind it out bringing in a lot of consciousness in what is happening you know don't just leave leave it uh, saying ki are ye to ho jayega apne aap se well that might work for some people but might not work for a majority so be conscious and observe what's happening uh set your parameters have a distinction between needs needs, needs versus and wants. wants yes which will help you where yeah. you can cut down and that's again that is something that you evaluate at a certain point of time that you are what is a want for me right now might become a need for me in one year down the line or the other way around and not all wants are bad yeah. but you so, you get to know that where can i cut down also what's important is when you are in a family setup it's important to align everyone on the same track because your spouse might be wanting something else and yes. you your goals could be very different then it's it's very hard to you know reach Reacher. that milestone and everybody is frustrated in the process so best to be aligned to a certain extent so that at least you know there's some compromises but then you are reaching your goal when you want one spirit which we carry is we four are a team yeah. we four humans are a team and we have to make sure we coexist meeting each we have to make sure each and everybody's needs are met so we work towards it versus which is looked at you know we are parents we are grown ups yeah. and you are kids you are not capable when that distance comes yeah it is a different ball game but when you look at each person of the family as a team you work together